excited to talk to Seth Greenberg, of course, Amal Shaw, Dustin Sweetelson. I'm Patrick Maher. Seth Greenberg is going to be covering the ACC tournament, of course. ESPN does an amazing job. 22 seasons as a college basketball head coach. Been covering college hoops on ESPN forever. We love watching Seth. And as we say hi, first off, thank you, Seth. We were having some debate about the one seeds overall. I've got UCLA, Bama, Houston, and Kansas. Would you differ? UCLA, Bama, Houston, and Kansas are my four. Yeah, you know, the Big 12 champ, the S and the Pac-12 champ have to be, just have to be in there. And UCLA, probably the most undercovered, really good team in college basketball. Uh, the way they're playing right now, obviously Jalen Clark is the big X, X factor if he's going to be okay. But uh, if you think about the UCLA team, uh, I don't think we talk about it enough. Experienced point guard, brutal matchup behind me, Hawkes, an elite defender, Jalen Clark. Big time just shot maker coming off the bench in Singleton. Those two freshmen have grown up in front of our eyes, enough depth in their front court. Um, yeah, UCLA is is for real, and, 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 and they've got an edge. Coach, I love the fact you said UCLA has been underrated this year. It's hard to think in a market that big that they would be, but I agree with you in terms of Bruins not getting enough credit with this 18-2 and two conference finish. I want to go to the SEC. Tennessee or Alabama, deeper run for you in March. Yeah, Alabama. Uh, Tennessee gets stuck offensively. Knows the guy Ziegler, uh, which will really hurt him because he gets him some easy baskets, which they miss getting right now uh, without him. Uh, he's also a terrific on-ball defender. Alabama is like Noah's Ark, man. They got like two of everything. I mean, <laughs> you look at their team, they're bringing Javon Quinterly off the bench. He's an absolute monster. I mean, if you didn't blow out his knee, who knows? But, you know, Brandon Miller is... He's a mixture between Paul George and Kevin Durant at the college level when they were, you know, young players. Uh, you know, uh, Noah Cloudy is a very, very tough matchup. Uh, they've got physicality in their lineup, and they've got depth. Uh, the speed that they play with is hard to simulate, especially on the second day of the tournament. But the only concern I have for them is when they play, play against really physical teams. You know, like the Oklahoma game was a little head-scratching for sure. But, you know, I think that uh, – Alabama is one of the most talented teams in college basketball. It's not the most – just if you can take talent, the most talented team in college basketball. Coach, are you – Seth Greenberg, ESPN, going to be covering the ACC tournament. Look, Seth, preseason, North Carolina probably overranked, but how do you explain – they're going to have to pick up some wins in the tournament you're going to cover. How do you explain the preseason number one struggling here? You're only as good as your team chemistry. So if you don't have great team chemistry, you don't have great team trust. Uh, you're gonna have a problem, and they don't. You can see it in terms of how they play. I mean, it's great. Like I'm so tired of talking about North Carolina. I'd rather talk about teams that have earned a reason for us to <laughs> talk about them. I mean, you can't get a bid because you didn't lose to anyone good, you know, bad. I mean, that's just the way it is. So look, they returned four guys. Did we overrate them? Maybe not number one, but no, they've underperformed as, as much as we've overrated them. And uh, it really has to do with, you know, what's going on probably in their locker room because Hubert Davidson didn't forget how to coach. Uh, he did a great job of bringing his team along last year. This team does not play with any speed right now. Uh, they don't beat you down the floor. They don't turn you over. They don't shoot the three. Look, they're, what are they, 19 and 12? Like, here's the deal. If anyone else was 19 and 12 and whatever they are in the ACC with a one quad win at best, I'm not even sure, but I'd love to a quad one would we be talking about them? That's a, that's a great point. I, I think you're absolutely right. They're North Carolina, and they went to the championship game, so I guess we talk about them. I want to stay in the ACC. Uh, this Miami team has been tremendous. Uh, I'm a big Jim Laranaga guy. I think his team has done a great job. How far, not just in the ACC tournament, but how far do you potentially see them going in the NCAA tournament? I think they're a second weekend team. Uh, I think that their backcourt, as long as Nigel Pack is healthy, you got Pack and you got Wong. Uh, Jordan Miller is a really tough matchup. North Child Mayor is probably one of the most underrated bigs, probably the most underrated transfers in college basketball. North Child Mayor is, I mean, you got to go from Eastern time zone to Central time zone to get around his rear end. I mean, I mean, he <laughs> carves out space. So uh, I think they're really good. Uh, you know, they could be a little bit disruptive, but they're not the defensive team they were a year ago. They're just not, and that's my concern. But offensively, the spacing they play with, the skill they play with, I think Jordan Mills is one of the most underrated players in college basketball. Uh, Wuga Poplar gives them a big wing that, that you know can make plays. They're a good team, but I'm, I'm not sure they're a Final Four team. 
Can Houston, of course, Seth Greenberg joining us here on Sharp Money, can Houston win a championship? Yeah, they, they remind me a little bit of that Baylor team that won the national championship in the bubble. You talk about, look at their backcourt with Shed and obviously uh, Sasser and, and uh, well, I've just gotten uh, the third guard. I'm Trey Mack. Those three guys are really, really good. Uh, they defend. They get extra possessions by offensive rebound. They get extra possessions by turning you over. At times, they do get a little stuck offensively. Uh, they're hard to score against in the half court. They're physical enough. They've got enough depth in their front court. Yeah, they can, They could be playing home games in, in Houston. I think that's a great point there. Coach, I want to follow up on Houston a little bit. I think the one thing that's challenging for people who, if you haven't faced the Cougars yet is the defensive intensity with which they bring on the floor for 40 minutes. I, I think it's tough to simulate, duplicate, or maybe even see on film until you get out there and face them. Uh, how much of a challenge is that, say, for example, if you're leading a team that has not faced someone of that type of defensive caliber? Well, if you don't have good guards, you got no shot. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, that's the thing. And, you know, the physicality of the guard play, yeah, 100%. I'm big on identity. Can you impose your identity on a game? You want to pick up sets? Look for a team that has a chance to impose their identity on a game. Because the team that owns the identity owns the pace and rhythm of the game. And, you know, that's the thing about this Houston team. They can impose their identity on the game because they can dominate you in the backwards. So if you don't have good guard play, if you don't have some pressure release, if you don't have guys – that are shot ready because you're not going to be open for a long time. And then if you don't have tough front court guys, they're going to go get it because those dudes, when that thing's shot, they rebound like 37% of their misses. Wow. Like their best offense is a missed shot. What is it no, for you, coach? You just play. mentioned guard. You just mentioned guard play. Let me follow up with you. We always, the old adage is, you know, experience in the backcourt come NCAA tournament time. But how about you coach? What is it that you look for in a team that can potentially win a championship? I look for guys that can go get it. First of all, short clock, late game. Can it, you have a guy that can go make a play? All right? You got to have shot makers. And then you got to make sure you, you, you can't give away possessions. You can't turn it over, and you got to be able to rebound defensive end. You know, like I used to say, I, I was fortunate to be four number one teams. I used to call it the art of the upset. And I used to tell to our team, we own the tempo and rhythm of the game. If we don't turn it over so that we can set our defense, if we don't give up second shots so we don't pick up foolish fouls and give them N1s and easy scoring opportunities, all right, and if someone steps up late in the game, we're going to win this game. And that, that's been my formula all the time. So in the tournament, it really comes, it comes down to simple things. You know, sometimes, like, you know, smart wins more than stupid loses. I mean, do you have a team that is tough enough and smart enough to not give games away? Don't turn it over. Don't give up second shots. Make sure the right guys are shooting the ball. You're pitching it all over the place, and you know what? You know, high turnover teams aren't winning. Teams that can't rebound a defensive end aren't winning. Teams that make shots are winning. And if you look, and then you know the experience thing is real because we always talk about the freshmen, 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 freshmen. Oh yeah, they got five, five star. That sounds great. Look at the final four teams in the last whatever years. Zion Williamson to get to the final four. All right, he was really good. Look at the DNA of the teams that win championships. They're all better teams. To, Title to, fours, very few seniors and um, very few freshmen impact national championships. I love, love that point you made about experience. Let's talk about an experienced team, the defending national champions. Love the way Jalen Wilson plays, and he rebounds and does what they need him to do. Harris is tremendous. Grady Dick has been a great uh, contributor, obviously more than a contributor, but I mean, he's just been an outstanding player for this KU team. Uh, for me personally, I feel like Kansas and Houston are the two teams. Is there anyone else besides – Houston and KU that you see that could cut down the nets? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think UCLA could cut down the nets. I'm going to talk about two teams that uh, the matchup I would like to see in the Final Four. I'd like to see UCLA and Kansas, two poor blue bloods. They haven't played since 2007 in the NCAA tournament. If a healthy Jalen Wilson, either defending, uh, being defended by Jalen Clark or Grady Dick being defended by Jalen Clark, point guard matchup to Juan Harris, who was defensive player of the year, I think, in the Big 12 against Tiger Campbell, one of the great leaders and clutch shot makers, uh, I think would be really, really interesting. And you got Jaime Hawkins. Jaime Hawkins and Jalen Wilson would be a great matchup. So, I mean, that would be a great that would be a great championship game. I mean, if you think about it, a, a, a struggle of pace. Obviously, you know they'll run on opportunity UCLA, but they'll also punch you in the face. You know, that would be a fun Final Four or championship game. Just have a minute here, Coach. The best out of the Big East, Marquette, Xavier, UConn, Creighton, Providence. Who do you like out of that league? 
I love Marquette. I love what Shock has done with this team because uh, not great half court defensively, but can kind of muck it up a little bit and turn you over. Tyler Kolick's the most underappreciated guy in America. That dude is. For, for, look it up, kids. Ernie De Gregorio. I mean, that dude drops dimes, and the kids also from Rhode Island. Uh, their front court is really skilled. I like them. I like UConn. Tristan Newton's got to take care of the ball. They got to have guard play. Uh, Jordan Hawkins is going to make shots, and Andre Jackson is a hard playing dude. And then Creighton. Uh, Creighton early hyped up. Obviously, Cockburner got hurt early in the season. He's healthy now. Uh, Trey Alexander is a a pro. There's no doubt about it. Nebhart is a good floor leader. Kaluma has got a big physical body. Uh, they've taken gotten bopped a couple times, but. Uh, I think they're dangerous. Savior, I like, but with Fremantle out, I'm, I'm not as high on them. His versatility was important for them. Seth Greenberg, always dropping dimes and knowledge. ESPN College Basketball Analyst going to be covering the ACC tournament. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time today. Thanks, guys. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a VEASAN Pro subscriber today.